So first of all, I just want to welcome everybody um, to our Beth Tikvah Chalabek with Carmela. And thank you all for joining us um, on a Thursday evening. Because like, I don't know, as Carmela and I were saying, it's pretty much our bedtime. Yeah. Um, so thank you also for muting yourselves just because there are a lot of us, which is amazing. And I want to make sure that we can all hear um, Carmela, who is our Revitin, but also our resident Chala Maven. She has a lot to teach us. Um, I like to bake and Chala has always eluded me. So I'm really excited to see what Carmela has to teach me because even when we did the in-person one, I failed. So I am excited to be in like the comfort of my own kitchen. Um, so for people who are asking, and I know this is a, um, sort of the big question mark of the program, how is this going to work? Uh, we are going to make our challah dough together step by step with Carmela. And then we're going to have a few different options of whether you want to bake it tonight or tomorrow. Uh, we will get there. Don't worry. Um, and as I mentioned as well, we have a youth, uh, sorry, a Beth Tikva YouTube page. This video is getting recorded. We are going to be posting this tomorrow on YouTube so you can refer back to this class at any time. Um, now, Carmela and I were saying that we both speak quite quickly. So if at any point you're like, oh my God, what is happening? Slow down. I just ask that you send me a direct message and I will let Carmela know. Or if you have a question, let me know and I will send that to Carmela. Just again, so that we don't have too many people speaking over one another. Um, so again, before we officially get started, I want to thank everyone for joining us and an extra thank you to all of the participants, many of you who made donations to the shul in honor of this event. Your support means the world to us and we're so glad that despite the craziness of the year, we're still able to congregate together for our annual challah bake. Um, I also need to extend a huge thank you in advance to Carmela for hosting her first ever Zoom uh, program with BT. So thank you, Carmela. And without any further ado, I am spotlighting you. The floor is yours. It is so strange to be on this side of the Zoom. Okay, hi everybody. Just so everyone knows, I can't see you. I can only see myself. So this is very strange. I'm gonna look at Renee. Renee, I'm gonna look at you the whole time. Um, okay, so does everybody, I know some people are, are ahead of us and they already started making their dough. Um, but I'll just go through the ingredients so that every, you know, if everyone, um, to make sure everyone's ready and we're all on the same page. Um, so we're going to need half a cup of sugar, if you want to prepare it, um, one tablespoon of yeast, a quarter cup of oil, two eggs, three and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, and one cup of warm water. So what I'm going to do, Ellie, how am I going to know if there's a question or something? I am going to interrupt you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going a little bit off of what the instructions say. I'm going to first add warm water to my measuring cup. So one cup of warm water. Water should sort of be like um, the temperature of a baby's bath, like not too too hot. So we have one cup of yeah, you might want to Oh, that's right. Renee's saying to do this. Okay. So it's still the head. So we have the one cup of warm water, and I'm going to put some of my sugar, not all of it, into the cup of water. Let me just get a spoon, Renee. And then we're going to put in the yeast. This is called, I'm sure many of you know, it's called poofing the yeast. Um, whoops. Whatever you, no, no, it's okay, Renee, leave it, leave it. I'm not going to use it. Um, and in a few minutes, this usually takes like three minutes and it will start bubbling. And that's how you know you have a good yeast. If it doesn't start to bubble, um, you have expired yeast. Um, so here you go. You can see, my, I don't know if you can see mine. Can you see it? You see it's already starting. 
but anyways, you'll see it in a second. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do in another bowl is we will put the rest of our sugar. So in a, in a bigger bowl. Top of the sugar, mm -hmm. warm water. Three and a half cups of flour. You want to put it? You want to stand in the stool? Okay. Let's do the oil. Go into the eggs. Oh, crap. We're going to add the oil. Can you just repeat the measurements as you're going? I just realized I was supposed to um, give you guys the significance yeah. of each. Okay. No, no, we're not doing it without you. Sorry, Nate, Nate, come, 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 come. We're doing the eggs now and we need you for the eggs. Um, I was gonna, so we used a quarter cup of oil that Renee put in and Nate is gonna put in the eggs. Nate, what do we do before we put the eggs in, do you know? What do we do? We check for what? Okay, so come, come stand on the stool and you'll help us. Come. Wanna do it? So come, stand on the stool. Carmel, we just got a request to slow down. So can we just go back a few steps? Okay, sure, sure. Um, so what we did was we put, here, straight this out. We put the half of the sugar, a cup of warm water, and one tablespoon of yeast into the measuring cup. And we just mixed it up and we're poofing it so that it poofs. So that was the first step that we did. And the second step is we put three and a half cups of flour, a quarter cup of oil, and two eggs into this bowl. And what are we missing? Hold on. And the rest of the sugar. And the rest of the sugar. And we and we put the we put the rest of the sugar. No, that's extra. Right? That's extra. Okay, so then Renee's gonna mix this up. Renee, you wanna mix it? And the salt. Sorry. The salt we're gonna add, okay, so the salt we're gonna add after we add the yeast because the the yeast needs to get into contact with the flour before the salt. Otherwise the salt will kill the yeast. I don't know if I'm if I sound normal, but that's the science of yeast. Okay, so now we're gonna add our wet ingredients. So do you see my is everyone's yeast bubbling like this? Hold on, let's see if you can. So some people just are are clumping, so I recommended just giving it a slight stir with your fork, just, but it should bubble if you give it enough time, right? Yeah, I mean, yes. You can wait a few more minutes. I, I wanted to, I can go back if people still need some time because I forgot, I wanted to um, just highlight the spiritual, just wait a minute, right? Um, I wanted to highlight the spiritual significance of each of the ingredients. So maybe I'll do that now. Um, I just ask you a question on your recipe. You didn't say to proof the yeast, you just said to put the yeast. Yes, I know, that was a mistake. That? That, that was a mistake, I'm sorry about that. I mean, you can- I figured I'll do it the way you said it. Cause yeah, I would I would do it the way- Well, I tried it. It will work better. I did try it that way, we'll see if it works. I, I think it will, I mean, it won't taste better. Because, because the thing is, is that the salt was also in there with the yeast. Right. So it might not work. I, I think it will because this is a pretty popular recipe that a lot of places use. So I, I think it will work, but it Okay, well, we'll try. I, please, you can't see it. But. I, I started making um, uh, sourdough bread and I discovered that bread is unlike any other baking. You kind of can't mess it up. And so I think Hala might be not quite as easy, but pretty close. If, if you up and there, it, a look who's coming. Oh, don't let it waste. I told them that I'm using the recipe. How many time. people? 58 people are watching you make challah now? Don't oh be jealous. Oh my God. Don't be jealous. 
How many of you are at my Monday morning adult education classes? <laughs> Ellie, can you take names, please? Nate, you want to I'll, I'll, I'll tattle on them, don't you worry. I think all your 58 are there on Monday morning. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I hope it's going well. Hi. You've had a busy day today, Rabbi. Busy day? I yeah. Know, I mean, here for a lot of oh, Melissa is sassing you, Rabbi. Mm. People are at work. Where's your dog? Hi. Um, Carmela, as you go through the ingredients, we're just going to request to go through the steps one more time. So just okay. Over there. Over there. Okay. Wait. Remind Nate to wash his hands. Nate, you want to go wash your hands in the bathroom, and then you can use what? I'm just going to remind everybody else to mute there. Just a minute. Just a minute. Have you put the yeast in yet? No, you need to go wash your hands. Yeah, show everyone to go wash your hands. Okay. So, have you? Oh, we're going to go. Sorry, Ellie. Have you? Daddy couldn't see. Did you put the yeast in yet? Yes. Oh, we okay. Renee's. Oh, okay. Yeast. Oh. Yeast it in. Just a reminder reminded to everyone to mute themselves oh, because we're all speaking over Carmela right now. Oh, sorry. Thank you. You're breaking up. Carmela, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. There we go. All right. So, okay, me, me turn. When someone once told me, and I don't know why, but when you make challah, you um, use Himalayan sea salt. Something about it is magical. I don't know what. Here, we're gonna mix in this the salt, okay? Here, okay, mix it in. Um, okay, so we're gonna go back to step one and I'm gonna speak about the spiritual significance of, um, of each ingredient. So the first thing we did was we used, um, do you wanna join? Sorry. Um, the first thing we did was we put one cup of warm water in the measuring cup and water represents second life okay the next thing we did was we put the sugar in we used half a cup of sugar but we only put half in the water um and sugar represents i guess all the sweet things in life so maybe add a little extra sugar um and then we put the yeast and yeast represents growth and we put it and we put one tablespoon of yeast and we put it in here and we let it poof we set it aside for a few minutes and it hopefully poofed up uh, then we went to our bigger bowl. Do you need a, okay, okay, okay. Do you need a napkin? Yeah. Um, yeah. Then we went to our bigger bowl and we put you two for three and a half oh. cups. We put three and a half cups of flour. Flour represents all the raw material that Hashem gives us. So we're going to take the raw material and make something. Um, that was three and a half cups. We put the rest of the, the sugar um, and then we put a quarter of a cup of oil. Oil represents abundance and blessing. We put two eggs. Eggs represent fertility. So a lot of women that are um, trying to get pregnant will say a special prayer at that point if um, while they're adding the eggs. So we put two eggs. Um, and then salt. Or I think we're at salt. And then after Renee mixed it, we mixed. Yeah. Give, give me a few more minutes. And then we put, I think, a teaspoon of salt and salt represents rebuke. So it says here to hide the salt among the flour to remind ourselves not to be overly critical. No, give Renee a minute. Okay, so that was it. That was, and now Renee is kneading. As you can see, and then Nate is, I think it might, is it a little sticky? Yeah. So if it's too sticky, I forget who was saying that it, their dough was a little bit sticky. We'll add a little bit more flour. And Can you, you just repeat that? Water is life. I mean, yeah. Sugar is sweet. Okay. Sugar represents sweetness and good things. Sweetness. Yeast. Yeast re represents growth. So we pray that God should protect you and help you and your family in your personal growth. Oil is... Oil was abundance and blessing. 
eggs represent fertility and all, and the bowl, I mean, I should have started with that. The bowl represents your home and each ingredient added to the bowl invites a unique blessing. That okay, a bowl represents home. And flower. the flower is the grain of the earth. Or the raw material. Raw material. You want it there? And the salt. The salt was rebuked. So you, you're, they say hide the salt among the flour to remind ourselves not to be overly critical. Oh, it's going to okay, be Nate's turn. So Nate is going to need the dough. Let Nate come up. You're going to come back because you're doing really well. But it's going to be your turn, okay? And actually, we can put it, maybe I'll put it on the counter for you, okay? Thanks. When you get to this point, can I just, can I just show everyone our dough? So when you get to this point of the dough, Renee did such a great job here. We're going to put it on the counter because it's easier to, to need on the counter. We need spray. And that's right. Nate just said we need spray. So I don't have to add a lot of flour to get to that consistency. I added a little bit more flour. I don't know if you know, but not much. Can I add a tiny, tiny bit more? Go a little bit thick. Sure. So just keep on. Let me do it. There Nate goes. Good job, Nate. And I think Nate does this in school. Not. No, I no, so then where do you know how to do it from? <laughs> okay, so now I don't know how many of you have been to one of our challah bakes at Beth Tikva. Um, usually, like Ellie said, we do a, a bigger batch. And the reason that we do a bigger batch is not because we're, we're hungry at what? You're doing a good job. Give him a minute. Okay, I'm going to put the timer on. He's going to get a minute, and then you're going to Okay, I'm going to to switch. Okay, so the reason we do a bigger, a bigger batch is because when you, when you make a batch of dough that is more than 14 cups of flour, you are then able to say a bracha, and it becomes a more spiritual experience. So like when, every time you make dough, you're supposed to take a piece off uh, the Torah tells us that you take a piece. It's actually one of the 613 mitzvot. You're supposed to take a piece of challah, of the dough off. And in ancient times, we would give it to the priest and their families. Um, the idea was that we should give a portion of our blessings to God. And because the Kohanim represented God, um, we would give it to them. It was not just to feed them. It was... It was also to acknowledge that our blessings and possessions are really from God, that God, they belong to him and that, um, that Hashem gives us the ability to use all of these blessings, but we, we just we have to remember that they're from him. So now it's your name's turn. Um, so because we're making a small batch now, we're not able to say the bracha, but we're still going to take a piece off and burn and burn it or or disregard it because we still do my grandmother my how, how sick back in the oven and burn i mean i don't hear she said if it burns what did you put in the oven and burn she said her mother would stick it in the back of the oven and let it burn yeah, that's what I, I put it on. I, I wrap it in tin foil and I put it on the stove and I, I, I let it burn and then throw it out. How sticky is it supposed to be? Well, you could see Renee's here. Renee's. I added flowers. This is Renee's. Um, but again, you could. Let's. Here, so can I need it a little bit? I mean, does yours look like this? Okay, I had to add another half a cup of uh, flour to the okay. recipe. All right, I mean, you can always add. Oh my, you can't take what away. is this? This is garbage, leave this, I don't know. Okay, and I think, Ellie, I think that was it. So we're gonna continue kneading. We need a little bit more. Sorry, I was too covered in dough to respond to anybody. <laughs> I have to wash my hands. Uh, so we have a question. If we are using a mix master with dough hooks, what speed, kneading speed or mixing speed, and for how long? Um, okay, so when I use my mixer, 
what I do is I let the dough incorporate, like I, I bring it all together. I then actually let, I rest, I, I let it rest for two minutes. It's called letting the so gluten rest. I let it rest for two minutes and then I turn it on again and I usually put it on speed number two for about five minutes. So I don't know what that would be equivalent to um, on your machine. I put it on 10 minutes with the dough hook. Okay. The more you need it, the soft, the smoother and, and the softer it will get. Is there a chance you could over knead it and like work the gluten too much, Carmela? That is a very good question. I'm gonna no. stump you. Yeah, probably. No, no I don't. Uh, yeah. No, the answer is no. I don't. No. But I. But now I want to. I will find out. But if you put too much flour in, you. But if you put too much flour in, it'll get hard. I definitely added too much flour. I can't. Is there such a thing as gluten-free color? Here, here, take this, Renee. Is there such Sorry. a thing? Is there such a thing as gluten-free? Of course, oh. of course, yes. Uh, my mother's on here. Yeah. Uh, I mean mommy, more. my mother's gluten-free, and yes, there is there is gluten-free flour. I mean you more. would use gluten-free flour. Yeah. <laughs> Too much flour will make it tough. Sometimes it makes it thin. Too much flour can make the the dough tough. Like it, it you yours is very springy, so it's nice. <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, I see something. There's my mother. Where, where is she? I'm here. I just want to say, maybe. How do I see my mother? You know, I'm going to put on to grid view because we're all chatting. Roll along till you find her. Keep on moving the arrow till you find your mother. Oh, I don't know how to pin her, but okay, yes, Ma. I just wanted to say, if you're make, using gluten-free flour, you don't say hamatzi on it unless it's oat flour. So you can have a challah roll that is hamatzi, and you can use it for kiddush and hamatzi. Or you can have a challah roll using regular gluten-free flour, but that's not made of wheat, and we don't say hamatzi. Uh, you don't say uh, that bracha on non-gluten-free flour. Like regular gluten-free flour is not. Uh, that would be um, rice. Rabbi, um, not sure how call the Mizonot. It would be Mizonot. Thank you, Mom. All right, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. I think it's, I think we're good here. Yeah. I think we're, well, it, it got quite sticky. Oh, it's So now we're going to put it in a bowl. And then these. No, well, that's. Okay. What was the name of the cookbook again? <laughs> it's called Peas, Love, and Carrots by Danielle. Right. She's fantastic. She's. So did you make the one on page 16? Did I what? Did you make the recipe on page 16? <laughs> which I don't know which one that was. I don't know, but he liked them all. He says, oh, this one was good and this one was good. Did you make anything? I know, and that mommy, my mother's list, my mother's here. We actually had that conversation in my mother's house. He was going through every recipe. Um, <laughs> but no, I've made, ma I've made many recipes in the book. I don't know what he's talking about. But when um, he said it about, uh, you know, I just sold my house and I had, I, I sold 150 Jewish cookbooks. You can wow. accumulate a lot of cookbooks. I couldn't take them with me. No, I know. I just couldn't take them. I mean, I love my cookbooks, but I go through stages, you know, I, I love some and I'm just getting a bowl. Uh, Carmel, we do have a question. Uh, can we add raisins or cranberries directly to the dough at this point? This is the cranberry. Yeah. Oh yeah, we'll get next. Okay, so this is what I'm doing now. Ellie, sorry, what was the question? Can you add raisins or cranberries to the dough? Sure. Sure. So, so I went through like a phase. I mean, I, I don't know. Renee can probably tell you. I went through a phrase a few summers ago where I rolled out the strands and I stuffed them with Oreos and, uh, and marshmallows. And I, I made like a marshmallow Oreo challah. You can, you can be creative. You can go wild with this. 
Um, that's amazing. And then another question is, do you spray the pan with Pam? So that's what I'm doing. Go. I'm going to spray the bowl. This is what our dough looks like. Let me just lower this. I put this in here. And then what I do. No, you cannot eat dough. Um, Only when it's then I spray the dough on this side also. And then I will cover with this. But why would you do that? this? Not now. I'm not very good at ripping the saran wrap. Um, you need scissors. <laughs> so, Carmela, I'm actually going to interject here because this is sort of the big question about uh, letting the dough rise and if we're going to be on a Zoom call for 17 hours. Okay. So you have, I'm going to pin me again. So there are two options for how you'd like to, um, for how you would like to uh, finish baking your challah. So option one is you can let it rise tonight. Uh, the recipe says that you let it rise for an hour covered. One trick that Carmela and I were discussing to speed up the rising process mm -hmm. is to put it in a lightly preheated oven. So you preheat your oven to 200 degrees, turn it off, and then put your covered dough in the oven. And in half an hour or half the allotted time, it should rise to how you want it to, uh, to look. So double in size. From that point, you would then punch it down you would punch it down, braid your challah, as Carmel is gonna teach us, let it rise for another half hour, and then bake it at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. That's all in the recipe that we sent to you. If you don't wanna be up till midnight tonight making challah, and you would like fresh challah tomorrow, uh, and this is actually the option that Carmela says might yield a better challah, we are going to follow Carmela's directions to keep everything overnight in the fridge. So I'm gonna turn it back to Carmela now. Oh, how many minutes to preheat? Um, if your oven does not tell you that it's preheated and come to temperature, honestly, just let it heat for like five minutes just to get the, it to be a nice warm environment for the yeast to do its thing. And then you turn it off. And then right? you turn it off. Yes, you don't wanna cook the challah. Okay, I'm just cleaning off the counter so that I can braid with you guys. So one second, Nate and Nate, does Jonah want to come? How long do you leave it in the oven? Excuse me, Nate. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, 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 oh. I closed the drawer on her finger. Nate, sorry guys, one second. Uh, Renee, do you want ice? If anyone else has any questions while Carmela's handling that uh, about proofing or rising, now's a great time. How long does she leave it to the saran? Sounds good. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure how you put raisins in or cranberries, dried cranberries, if you want to. You do it after this rise. Tomorrow before you're braiding, or so I would I would do it while you're braiding. So what Carmela says she does is she would make the strands and then fold all the yummy bits into the strands. Each strand separately. Correct. Ah, okay. Okay. And Rhonda, to answer your question, if you are putting it overnight, uh, Carmela's going to show us. We do it in the fridge. It will go bad if you leave it on your counter. Yes. Yes. I mean, okay. Thank well, you. This is how it looks. You put the saran. So I sprayed both. One second. I sprayed both sides of the dough with Sam. I I'm sort of. Air is the enemy of your dough. Okay, so you don't want it in the fridge to be exposed to air. So you put the saran wrap really like against your dough. I mean, not so tight. There's a little bit of room, but you can sort of see. Okay, and then you put a, a towel on top, and you just leave it in and take it out in the morning and take it out and let it get to room temperature and then you would braid it. So I'm gonna put mine, how's everyone's dough looking? I'm gonna put mine in the fridge now. My dough's not good, Carmela. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Carmela, 
Yes. I put, I accidentally put, I put, Show it to me. I put the raisins wow. into the dough. Is that, now it's going to happen here. No, it's good. No, it's good. It's good. It's fine. I, I really don't, I, I don't think you can go wrong. So should, I, I should put the oil now in and it's going to go in the fridge with my raisins? Yeah. yeah. You're going to put it It's going to be fine. I have one more question from the chat. If you're making two chalas, should they rise together or separately? Okay, so you can, you can do it all the way. I'm going to show you how, let, let it rise together. That's the simple answer. Just put the, the big ball in the, uh, in the fridge. And then I'm going to show you how I do mine when I make every week when I make it. Okay, Nate, go down. Okay. So when I make my dough before it has its first rise, I cut I separate it into a bunch of balls like this. So now they already rose. And then so each ball is going to be a strand. And each strand weighs before it rises about four ounces. So that I'll have even. Now it, it rose like this, and I, I just have to pull off each ball like that. I'm actually going to get this. Carmela, you, you um, broke up. I couldn't hear what you said. How, how much does it weigh? Um, so it depends what I'm doing anywhere between three and four ounces. I sort of just choose if I'm doing circle colors, I do six ounces, but, um, a regular fella, I choose between three and four and just so that they're all the same. Um, cause you don't have like one rope that's, I mean, it depends how much you care. Uh, but you don't want to have like one super long rope and then one small one. So, and when do you do that? When exactly do you cut that those up into different so right after I make the dough, right then and there, that's when I do it. And, I, and then I let it rise on this sheet. Okay, good. Whatever. So instead of doing it in a bowl, Carmela, you would do it like you did on a sheet? Yes. Got that's it. That's how I do it. Um, and, then, and then if you don't want to use all the dough, so I freeze, a, a lot of times I'll freeze half of the balls and I use them for like pizza during the week, I'll defrost them or, or another week when I want to make when I'm not interested in making color. So I'm gonna to demonstrate tonight a four strand and a six strand. So why don't we start with the four strand? I think that's easier. Yeah, where's your keeper? Oh, it's right there. Okay, so. Wait, 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 wait. Put it right there. I'm just trying to see what the best angle is for you guys to see. Whoa. Maybe this that looks good. This? Okay. So, you want to do your own name? Okay. Here. So, you, no, no, you'll do this one. This will be yours. No, those are mommy's. What can we do now? This is yours. These are your samples. Okay. So, you'll roll out yours. Is everyone, oh, not, no one's doing this now, right? No. <laughs> All right. So, you have your strands that we're going to roll out. Oh, it's too slippery. Oh, it's okay. Just keep on rolling. Just roll it. And remember, there's going to be another rise, right? So after we braid it, there's, we let it rise for another 45 minutes. I'm just going to, uh, Melissa asked um, when to, she said, so we take the dough out of the fridge and put it into bowls on a pan and let it rise a second time. I believe, Carmel, what you're saying is you just put it on the pan to start, right? You don't, you, that's your first rise? Sorry, I wasn't, Nate spoke. I didn't hear what you said. Melissa asks, so tomorrow we take the dough out of the fridge and put it into bowls on a pan and then let it rise a second time. When you take it out of the fridge, leave it in the bowl that it's in. Leave it in the bowl that it's in. Let it, leave it there for like three or four hours. Then 
then you can separate it, grate it however you want, and then and then let it rise for 45 minutes once it's grated. Yeah, I think it's going to rise a little bit in the fridge overnight, but the real first rise should happen like when it's coming to room temperature and it's on the counter. I think the question was when do you like when do you personally cut yours and make them into balls? So you're saying that you do that instead of putting it in a bowl. You put it in the fridge right off the bat in a pan. One second. No, when I, do, I I can't Nate, I can't concentrate. When do I so as soon as I make my dough, I separate it into these balls and I let it either so I separate it into the balls on the cookie tray and either I freeze it. I don't, I don't put it in the fridge. Either I'll freeze it for another time um, or I'll let it rise like this, the way, like I made this a few hours ago um, and it just rose on the cookie sheet on my counter. Did I answer then, the question? I think so, yeah. So the first rise, to answer Melissa's question, is on the baking sheet or in the bowl, however you choose to do it. So you can pre-divide or you can just put it all into a yeah bowl. my way is i just do it this way because i you i i have a lot of dough when i make it um but with this amount of dough that we made um i wouldn't do it this way i would just divide it it's probably very easy to see um and then we have one other question eric says my strands always shrink up how can i stop them from shrinking maybe do this <laughs> i don't <laughs> I mean, you see, yeah, play with it. They're they're gonna they're gonna shrink up. And then when you're when you're braiding, I mean, you can always give it a little a little tug. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with the four braid. Mom, yeah. oh, thank you. Nate. Okay, wait. I'm gonna give you another ball. So lucky that you're here. Okay. So you need three. I know. So right now, do two. I'm gonna do a four braid. Okay, wait. Let's see if this here, so you could. So what you do is you, you, you'll attach the four strands on top, okay? And what you want to say to yourself is over, under, over, under, over, No, under. I know how to make the four. Okay, we're going to do this way. You can it. So you always start with the right, okay? So you're going to go over, under, over, okay? And then again, you always start with the right. I mean, this is probably the easiest way to braid. Over, under, over. And then again, you start with the right. Over, under, over. Okay, and then again, you're here. Over, under, over. Did it. Job, and then this is probably the last one. Over, <laughs> under, over. And then you sort of just pinch it, push it under, pinch this side, put it under, and then sort of just, there you go, you have your four braid. I did it. And then it looks so easy. This way, this one is much less complicated than, I, can, I cannot do the five braid, so I, I in all my years, I can't do the five braid. The six braid I can do. I'll show you the six braid. Um, so then I buy these at Kosher. What's it called? It's across from Toronto Kosher, Kosher City, or is that City Kosher? Kosher City. Kosher City. I, I Kosher use City. Across the street from Toronto Kosher, and you can use these, or you can just put it on a cookie tray. Um, you spray it with Pam. And this is the second rise. So the second rise will take place in here. Nate, one second, okay? You get your saran wrap. And again, pan the top. And that's your four braid. And just one more time, I'm sure everyone got this and I'm the one who missed it because I've been running around. But when you take the, the dough out of the fridge, you said you let it sit for a few hours because that's the rise? Yeah, you'll see. I mean, it has to come to room temperature. I think I let it rise for three hours and I came back, I went out, I brought the kids to school um, and I still wasn't satisfied. It still didn't seem like it was at room temperature. I think I waited another half an hour and it was, it was great.
So, I mean, it's, I think it depends on the temperature in your house and how cold your fridge is, but just room temperature. And also it should have doubled in size. If it's starting to, to explode, like Jake said, it's, that's too much. <laughs> Double in size. Great. Um, so then here you have it. So this is now gonna rise for 45 minutes. Um, and then I'm gonna egg wash it. When you egg wash it, um, in, if you want it dark, like in a dark brown, you, you'll use the egg yolk. Um, but if you don't, then just use the egg white. Sorry, one second. Um, and then you can um, use whatever toppings you'd like. Um, okay, I'm gonna uh, demonstrate the six braid unless anyone has any questions. And then just so everyone knows, it is um, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. If you guys want the recipes for some creative toppings, I have that also. Bye, Belper family. Carmela, how yes. do you, um, when you I do an egg wash and then it bakes, it, it sort of separates where there, there are these valleys and they're not. Sorry, one second. It's going to be time for bed, okay? What's the problem? That's fine. So start again. Just start again. Okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. So, so when you put the egg wash, um, the, the, the parts that are rounded get brown and the parts in the valleys are still white. I think that has to do with, um, with how you're egg washing it. Are, are you painting it evenly? I thought I was. But when, but when it bakes, it, gets, it expands even more. Right. Um, I don't know, but I do know that I always cook my challah on the lower rack. Oh. Um, and then if you don't want it to be brown at all, just do it with egg white. Oh. Um, don't use the, uh, in, in the, in my famous cookbook, um, she says to do, I think one egg, one full egg and then one egg white. Okay, so I'm gonna just roll out the, um, the six strands. That's how you make the challah. This is a little bit sad because I usually did the challah bakes with Noreen and she was always able to answer all these questions. Um, anyways. Mommy, You're I'm doing great though. You're doing her proud. I know Noreen Gillis, Mommy, but thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Nate, you want to show everyone what you did? Nate just made a challah roll. You want to show everyone? Show everyone your challah roll. Okay, and now we're gonna put it on our cookie sheet. Okay, so put it there and then after you put it to sprinkles, okay? Good job. No, we need the spring. No, this doesn't need the spring. Carmela, what's your famous cookbook I'm being asked? Sorry, it's the peas, love, and carrots one. The one that Jared made famous. Sorry? I told you I know. I know you do, okay, you have a lot of dough there. Uh, just answering some questions here, Carolyn, you said, how long does the dough stay in the preheated oven? So remember, you turn the oven off because you just want it to be in a warm space and it can stay in there for half an hour and it should double in size. But just make sure it doubles in size before you remove it. And um, Leah and Amy say, the oval pan that you showed us, is that what you bake it in? We usually bake on a baking sheet. What is the difference? So I, that's a good question. I use these, um, that's when I use a six, when I make a six braid, um, I'll usually, I bake it in those tins and then after half an hour, I will take it out and I just put it directly on the oven, like on the rock, because otherwise it, it I find it just doesn't bake. Yes. But I think that the little tins keep, help keep its shape because it might yeah. spread a bit on a cookie sheet. Yes, it helps keep its shape, but then it, it, no. Not now, no. Not now. Yeah, sprinkles, you can use sprinkles. Okay, so I'm, I'm on my sixth strand and then we'll do the sixth. Is everyone still here, Ellie, or did people uh, start dropping up? No one has abandoned you except for one family member for bath time. Oh, okay. <laughs> time to get sticky. 
How long on the cookie sheet, Sandra, are you asking for rising? It should rise for another 45 minutes and then it bakes for 30 minutes. When you're rolling your color strands, I always, or I try to remember to make the ends a little bit more thin. It just helps a little. Okay, so here we have the six braid. And by the way, if you've ever received the hala from me, when I'm making hala for other people, I do wear gloves. I have my gloves right over here. This is for my family. <laughs> Here we're getting ready for the six braid. Renee's doing a dance. Renee, do you want to show everyone your dance? Okay, so let me do the six braid and then I'll give you attention. Okay. All right, so what, this is the six braid. I'm just, I think that my hands are going to be blocking. I think it's fantastic. Okay. Carmela, just lower the screen half an inch. Oh my okay. God. Okay, so. Beautiful. Okay, so we take the two sides, the two ends, and we're gonna find a, and we cross over. No, I'm not satisfied with the way this is. Hold on, I'm gonna fix this. Oh, you froze, hold on. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, so we crossed over the, the, the first two. Then we're gonna take the, the right, my right, in the middle. And you now take this one and you bring it over to the side. And now you have your two here. This one's gonna come down to the middle. And now this one's gonna replace that. And you have your two. This one's gonna come down to the middle. This one replaces. I don't know if I'm doing a good job at all at explaining. Um, should I start from the beginning, Ellie? You can YouTube it too. Yes, exactly. You can, it, it's, I learned how to do this with colorful dough. So it was much easier to tell the difference. But this is basically. My Zoom cut out. Was everybody else okay there? I don't know. No one else is complaining, so it was just me. And get to the end. Just... Beautiful. It's beautiful. So perfect. Carmela, just in case, because I was recording, do you have strands to do one more six piece uh, fella? Yes, I do. I do. Okay, so this one I will. You're just gonna have to wait while I roll it out. But... That, is, that is fine. I'm sure people have questions. Did you want the recipes for the toppings? Sure. Okay, so... Renee is being very creative over there. She's stuffing her challah with a made good bar. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Want to show everyone what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. She's... Should we put it in your lunch tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, you can. No, no, I have here. And Melissa is excited to hear about toppings. No, Renee, take one. Sorry, Ellie. Melissa is asking about toppings. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry here. Oh, here it is. Okay. So for a sweet topping, I actually have this in my freezer. So I make a big bag of this and I put it in my freezer. 
one cup of flour, just in a big Ziploc bag, one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, one tablespoon of vanilla sugar, and then either six tablespoons of canola oil or six tablespoons of cold butter or margarine. And you um, mix it around until you have like a sand-like consistency. And that's like a sweet, that's what the bakery sort of used for, uh, for like the Rosh Hashanah topping for a sweet one. And then if you wanna do like a cookies and cream one, um, you take Oreos and sweet van and the vanilla sugar and you um, sugar. crumble that on top. And then the other one that I have is a cinnamon streusel topping. And again, this the topping you can also put in the strands. You can also stuff the strands with it. You take one cup of brown sugar, one cup of flour, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and again, either six tablespoons of canola oil or six tablespoons of butter or margarine. And um, sorry, and um, until it's like a sand-like consistency, and then you, when you egg wash your challah, you just um, crumble it on. Do you have a substitute for I vanilla did. sugar? Could you send it out with a bean paste? Because you're allergic or because you don't have it? Um, I think just vanilla sugar. Actually, you can find that in most baking aisles, but you could just add vanilla paste. I mean, like packets. Mm -hmm. In packets or do I have? They're like yellow packets. Yeah, they're in most baking aisles, but if not, you could just, I think you could just have them use vanilla. Use vanilla or, um, yeah, you can use vanilla. If everyone looks in the chat, I have written out everything that uh, Carmela has said for her topping recipes. Ellie, can you email it out? Yes, I can. I actually Could have you, a whole bunch of toppings. I, I didn't print it, so I don't have it here, but I have savory ones also. Um, okay. I'll send it to Ellie, and I, Ellie, I guess you could send it out. Come on it. There's also a, uh, if you're ever in the States ever again. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> From um, Trader Joe's, there's everything but the bagel toppings. Whatever. You can buy that at Costco now. You can? Yeah. You can. Yeah, okay, oh, good. I just ordered special from, <laughs> I paid a fortune. And, and... Here. I'll never again, Marilyn. <laughs> Kelly, didn't they have it at Farm Boy? They did not have it at Farm Boy, but they have it at Costco. I know I bought two big ones and one for Shira. <laughs> Here's the Trader Joe. Oh, it's Sorry, good. I have to leave, but thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, Marilyn. Bye, Marilyn. Another Zoom. Okay, so here we go. We're going to demonstrate the six one more time. Okay, so hold on, because I'm going to write it down. I wrote six strands. Oh, okay. So, so this will also be on the YouTube video, Shirley. This is something you may want to follow, and there are probably much better YouTube videos than, than this. So, um... Right, so one know. goes over and six goes over. So first here you have, you're gonna just sort of pinch all of your pieces together at the top. And this this sort of starts the challah. So you have okay. you cross the two over. Then you have two on each side. So, and this is the center, right? Right. You're gonna bring the one that's on the right-hand side down the middle. Now there's nothing on this right-hand side. So this, this one, is gonna replace it. Now right. you have Okay, your got it. This one's gonna come down. Now there's nothing here, so this comes over here. Now you have your two, the middle, this is gonna come down to the center. Again, there's nothing on this side, so this replaces it. And now this is gonna come down in the middle. And, and, and so on and so forth. It's hard to explain with words, but- You have to number them. <laughs> once you figure out the pattern, um, it's quite simple. And I know how frustrating it is because I can't for the life of me, I've been, tried for an hour today trying to figure out the five grade and it just wasn't happening. So if you're not getting my tutorial on YouTube, there are some really good ones. This comes down to the middle. 
This will go over. It comes down. I'll let you know how my challah turns out following your recipe the way it is. Okay. Yes, everyone can send their uh, their their pictures to me so that I can post success stories. On and there you go. I'm just going to go get another tin. Do you recycle those tins? I do. I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, you don't have to. Um, I've heard that if you use them more than once, you like disposable dishes, you don't have to bring to the mikvah to kosher. I think if you are using something more than once and it's not disposable, you should bring it to the mikvah. But um, Ask your rabbi. I don't know. <laughs> Ellie, can you go buy some for me? Yes, Mama. Mail them and mail them. We're sending pans to Winnipeg. They have them. I'm sure. Actually, I'm not sure, but I would assume they have them on. Yeah, but you want to know it has to rise first. And then after. So then, after it rises, then you I egg wash it, and um, and then we put on our toppings. <laughs> Do you know the measurement of the tin, roughly, Carmela? Okay, so I have to, I actually have another one. I'll show you. I have a smaller one that when I make a three braid one, um, and I, I measure out my balls of dough to be three ounces because like when it's just us for Shabbos, I, we don't, we don't have to eat so much challah. So um, I, I use a smaller one. So this one, this one is five pounds. This is a five pound one. And I, I'm gonna go get the other one. If anyone else has questions, you can just put them in the chat now before we um, finish everything up. So the smaller one that I use is a uh, three pound one. And then for Rosh Hashanah, I love using these for the circle colors. And I'm sure you've seen the pull apart ones where you just put like balls in here and then you can pull it apart. I mean, you can have a lot of fun. Uh, how many inches long is it, is the question. Oh, which, which one? The long one. It says five pounds extra large oval baking. It does not say. This is three pounds. It doesn't go by the, I mean, I can get a measuring tape. I, I don't know. Do you, want me to get, do you want me to get a measuring tape? Hello? No one's answering you. <laughs> I guess it wasn't so important. Um, all right, so here we go. We have another one here. Ellie, did you disappear? She disappeared, and I unfortunately lost the questions in the chat. Uh, but someone asked if you can freeze it after braiding it. Wait. Yeah, you can because I'm in. You always see in um, the Lechner's one. The Lechner's ones are the Montreal kosher ones. So you could um, braid it right away before it rises. There's different ways to do it. I mean, however, whatever works best for you. Just I wouldn't let it rise and then braid it and then freeze it. I would braid it right away before it um, before it rose. Perfect. Does anyone else have any questions that I didn't get to because my internet died? I do, I, I have the. Do you have it? Okay. Um, I just don't know where to start. Um, 808. What was the last one you did? Do you remember who sent it? Uh, oh, the last one. I was asking about the pan size. Vanilla sugar. 
What is the measurement in tin? Oh, here we go. Okay, I see that. I've always used a cookie sheet for, sheet for challah. It works fine. My oven is convection though. Okay. Is the braiding done before putting it in the fridge? No. So what I suggested was no. Um, Renee, can you stop? Um, that's it. I mean, no, you didn't really miss anything. Oh, okay. Well, then I think everyone's feeling confident. Um, I just want to use this time again to thank everybody for joining us um, and for asking really useful questions to help everyone like me uh, who's not good at making fella make hopefully a better fella, even though I think I added two extra cups of flour while meeting. So mine's going to be bad, but that's okay. Um, so just a reminder to everyone that we are posting this video on YouTube um, on the Beth Tikva channel, and I'm sending everyone an email with that link so that you can look back at Carmela's braiding um, um, just because sometimes it's easier to watch a video and pause as you go. Um, I also- Ball each time. Yes. And then she makes the- And I just wanted to let everybody know that we do have a few more fun programs uh, coming up through the Youth and Young Family Department. Um, so if you enjoyed baking with us today, um, Sammy Ginsberg from Sam Sweet Creations is going to be joining me on Sunday, December 13th, as we bake a Sufganiya Hanukia. So that will be a very elaborate donut. So everybody, I hope you join us for that. Um, we also have on November 21st, our drive-in movie night. All of the details are on our website, but we have an early screening at 6 p.m. of Disney's Onward and a later screening at 9 p.m. of Keeping the Faith. Oh, yeah. Registration closes on Tuesday, November 17th, and space is limited. Make sure to book your space today. Um, it costs only $25 uh, per vehicle for members and $35 per vehicle for non-members. Um, we also have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, we've got our menorah lighting and details will all be coming to your emails and to the Best Info website if you are not on our email list. So please keep be. checking back. Um, Kelly, the tenant houses in Winnipeg want to know when the next trivia night is? Next year, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everyone join us for trivia night as well. I was told the questions were just a scooch too hard. I will make it easier, maybe. Um, and please feel free to send Carmela any pictures of your finished colors. I would love to post them on our Instagram and show off all of your handiwork. You. Um, and I'm just going to leave the Zoom open for a few more minutes if anyone has any questions. But once again, thank you. And thank you, Carmela. So thank good you. Meeting you. Zoom. You're doing it all now. It's very intimidating because I'm not used to being in front of people. So thank you, Ollie, for talking me through it. You did great. Thank you. You did really nicely, Carmela. It was really nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you. Nice to meet you too in person soon, hopefully. I I, I can only hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carmela. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Melissa. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks, Carmela. Bell Bell. Give it a nice say thank you. Tell your mother. Tell her I use her cups all the time. <laughs> Where's Leah? Where's Leah? She was. Oh, you know what, Ellie? We didn't go over the simple color roll. Um, just throw it in a bowl and throw it in the oven. Yeah, that's Is true. That a <laughs> you could just make it. I mean, I'm doing one now, so there you go. You have a simple. This is like at the end of the Avengers movies, there's like the extra end of credit scene. So everyone who stayed on got to see how to make the hell a knot. There you go. It's just but that knot. was very fast. Can you do it again? Yes. <laughs> there's probably a better way to do it. This is what I do with my extra though. I don't see myself at all. So I don't know if you could see the- uh, I, I see you perfectly. Thank you. So here you have your strand and mm -hmm. you just make a knot. You make it look so easy. <laughs> It's a knot, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, they, I mean, the only, the key thing is just to put that extra piece under so it yeah. doesn't pop up, but yeah. 
All right, guys. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.